Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Splitting Smart, where we have candid and informative discussions with divorce and well being professionals. I am Lila Aiken Ali, a divorcee, a divorce coach, and the founder of Split FYI. And I'm Heather Steer, a divorcee, a CDFA, also a divorce coach, and the other co founder of Split FYI. Um, and today we're very excited to be in discussion with Jan and Jillian Uhas, who are both um, family mediators and co-parenting coaches. Um, they grew up with divorced parents and this sisterly duo set out to pursue their passion by providing support and insight to families going through a separation or divorce. Uh, through their co-parenting coaching and family mediation services, they offer creative solutions to challenging problems that are logically executed, which is something we all need. And their expertise is a blend of family psychology and real life experience to guide and serve all family members. Um, just a quick note before I hand it back over to Lila. Uh, for anyone attending this, you can put um, questions in the chat. We will get to them. I'll be monitoring that. We'll put notes in the chat um, as I'm able. Uh, to as uh, you know, trying to engage in this great conversation too. So um, I'll hand it over to you, Lila. So welcome girls. Um, in today's discussion, yeah, we're very excited to have you both. Um, and in today's discussion, I wanted the audience to know that we'll be covering you know, how beneficial it is for children to be coached through their parents' divorce and how coaching is not just good for the parents, um, but it's really, it's a family as a collective, right? Because they are going through something together. And so again, um, thank you, Jan and Jillian for being here with us um, and supporting our Split FYI community as well. So yeah, one thank of the- you for having us. Oh, <laughs> pleasure. I mean, especially in a week like this, right? This is actually nice that we're talking about something a bit different. I mean, the topic isn't always great, but right now, anything that's going to take us out of the other topic, <laughs> <laughs> the looming topic, whoever's going to be watching this in the future, yes, it's election week. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, deep breaths. Uh, so, I think one of the first things that would be really beneficial for our audience, um, and this is a question that's often asked to us, is that what is the difference between coaching and therapy, especially when it relates to divorce and kids or parents going through divorce? So a lot of times we sort of explain the difference in a way where therapy is about sort of um, processing your emotions, understanding your experiences, and just helping you really just be able to heal and let go. Where coaching has that similar uh, take as well, but we're very goal-oriented. So we're actually taking actions. We're trying to apply new skills so we can really be able to get ourselves into that new lifestyle as we make those transitions. So it's more action-oriented versus just communicating or expressing our feelings. Right. And so in, in regards to, and that brings me to that question of, okay, so um, there's a difference, but like how, how do important, and it's not one is better than the other. I know you can't just say, oh, therapy is better than, you know, coaching, coaching. They're kind of needed in different arenas, right? But um, when it, in regards to the co-parenting protocols and for the family, and so what would, how would coaching fit into all of that? First. So when it comes to co-parenting coaching, it's much more solution focused than if a couple was going to therapy and trying more likely when you have two parents that are very conflictual, not agreeing on what's best for the children, going mm -hmm. to therapy is not going to probably be the ideal option for them in that situation. Going to coaching is going to be better because we're going to give them the um, self-soothing tools that they need in order to process their emotions on their own time outside of the co-parenting relationship, but also give them the communication skills, how to implement healthy boundaries. What are the value systems that they want to establish for raising their children and focus on those values in terms of um, such as education or um, in terms of their just overall development as children and really hone in on those values as a family and what's important to that co-parenting relationship as well. 
right? It's because a lot of times often people think, oh my goodness, and I, it's like going to therapy and we're trying to rekindle something or we're trying to, you know, be in a couple, still as a couple. So I think that's a really good differentiator because it is about moving forward as a yes. divorced family. Correct. It's about moving forward and creating two healthy homes mm -hmm. um, for the children to live in. And then also in terms of creating that healthy co-parenting relationship that they can be at peace and communicate um, that benefits the children's overall well-being. Great. Also, it's almost, oh. okay. also but, too, as we offer virtual online services, you don't have to necessarily see your ex or be in the same environment with them. So you know, when they come to co-parenting coaching, they're in their own private home. They're not having to meet together. And so that can really help people ease the process as well mm -hmm. because they're in their own space, that which is their safe haven. Right. That's actually a very interesting point. <laughs> it, that provides a little bit of a shield from the energy exchange, mm -hmm. you know, in the room. And um, and also I would, I would think that would help the children sometimes, although would the children be in those sessions in one parent's house or the other? Not when it comes to co-parenting coaching, we don't recommend the children being present just because we're dealing with adult issues and it's not really beneficial to children to overhear such conversations. Um, especially if the, for instance, if there's a disagreement, we don't want the children to pick up on that tension because children are very perceptive mm -hmm. of um, energy and uh, tension between their parents. They pick up on that, even if they aren't um, able to really understand the verbal content at that point. So if you have the children and it's your, you know, parenting time and you're having a co-parenting coaching session, we'd recommend, you know, going to a private space in the home, whether it's an office um, or closing the door in your bedroom, have the children watch the TV or, you know, play a game, do something that's in <laughs> earplugs. Exactly. It's just something to help them keep them busy while you're having your session. So, yes. so what, so, okay. So what are the tools that we're on the subject right now with co-parenting, which is something that we want to talk about. There is obviously we want to get to the fact of what's, you know, and how do you shift gears and how do you parent, uh, I mean, uh, coach kids. And that's the interesting, right? So it's like, do you often have a relationship with the parents and the children, or is it tend to be a separate thing, a thing that you actually only coach the kids and you're not actually coaching the parents or do it, does it have to kind of go together? Yes, there are situations where we all are only speaking to the child and that's it in terms of children coaching. We don't always speak to the, we'll speak to the parent obviously to set up the appointment and the ch uh, parent might be present for the very first session just to introduce um, their coach to them because depending on the age of the child, we might have to introduce who we are or how we're going to help them in various different manners, depending on what they're able to process, whether it's like we can consider ourselves, you know, if you like you go to soccer, you have a soccer coach. This is a coach that's going to help you either with confidence or communication or helping you feel better if you're feeling stressed at school. So it depends how we communicate what type of coach we are to the child in terms of how old the child is, whether the parent is going to be present or not. Now, if it's like a you know 15 year old or somebody a little bit older, then obviously that child doesn't need their parent to be present in the first session because they're um, a little bit more mature. But usually, right. yeah, the parent is not necessarily involved. So what is your youngest client? <laughs> How old is your youngest client? Uh, the youngest I've worked with is eight years old. And so a lot of times the parents will just ask, is there anything I can do at home? And so we can make suggestions as well based on the information the child's exchanging with us. But we do try to protect, protect their confidentiality as well. But we will speak with the parents as well, just to give them a little bit of suggestion on how they can support their child during this time. Right. Well, I think that's kind of important just to keep it so that, you know, the child is being heard as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. So when you're working with these children, I, I heard you mention all sorts of skills that you're helping them develop. It's, it's helping to develop their voice so that they're heard communicating with their parents. Um, and in particular, I can imagine situations where there's a less involved parent that suddenly is really on the scene because it could be a 50-50 custody situation of a parent that wasn't 50-50 before in the, you know, together marriage. Um, 
So what sorts of um, skills are you doing and, and what are the tools that you use with them? Like some examples uh, based on the skill set, I think would be really interesting to hear about. So we teach a lot of them, we're teaching them just to better understand themselves as well as individuals and creating their own belief systems as their own unique individual. Um, Cause a lot of times, obviously the first five years of life are when children really developed their self image of who they are and their personality and how they're going to operate for the rest of their life. So while they might pick up different belief systems or habits from their parents, we also want to help them really hone in on who they are as an individual and how they can express themselves and fully accept themselves. Because sometimes children going through divorce can tend to self blame or tend to feel like they're the reason their parents got divorced. And then that weighs on their self esteem and how they feel about themselves and they internalize it. So sometimes we have to do um, reworking the self-esteem. We also do like positive affirmations. Uh, sometimes we also help them create a vision board. What is your new life gonna look like at your mom's house? What does it look at dad's house? And create this you know, new life that they're gonna have through using stickers and creating their like vision board. Sometimes we might have them draw pictures of their families or just pictures of themselves and express to us, you know, tell us about this image, tell us about your relationship with this person, tell us about your relationship with this parent, this sibling, who's this? And so we really understand their relationships with each person within the family. Um, sometimes we also might do learning about their different emotions, facial expressions, and what, what does happy mean to you? What does sad mean to you? So just really just helping them understand themselves and how to be more at peace with also like self-soothing exercises. So what are some great examples of self-soothing exercises that even, you know, maybe I can give them to my kids. Yeah, <laughs> I'd love to know those. <laughs> Deep belly breathing. So just teaching the belly to get as big as a balloon to help them be able to release it. So that's one that we always really help. Uh, meditating. There's a lot of different apps out there for children to use in terms of meditation or even go to YouTube. You'll find children meditations. That's a great mm -hmm. exercise for children because they love to be able to like feel that calm, soothing energy and it can really help them calm down. Just like, I know you're having a tough time right now. Would you, would you like to do a meditation or do some deep belly breathing? So it teaches them to self-soothe and center their own emotional state and nervous system. So that way they feel powerful and confident because then they're like, oh, I don't need to depend on mom and dad. I'm actually learning to do this on my own. That makes me feel good about myself. Right. And so then also another exercise we might do is like, what are some daily goals you want to achieve for yourself? So helping them focus on their goals, maybe it's like, I want to make a new friend or I'd like to work towards a goal so I could get a dog or a kitty cat, whatever it might be. So you're teaching them to work towards something which also can help soothe them because they're focusing on something positive in their life. Right. I mean, and it is at that, I, I love the mind shift, right? It's like changing because we see it. Like I, I know personally, I see it in my daughter um, when they catastrophize and they start, you know, oh my God, everything is happening. And it, they take it all on board. And it's like, oh, let's try to teach her how to just take one thing at a time <laughs> instead of looking at it like this and, and giving them those tools. And it's tough because we know as adults, you know, and as parents, how maybe to help our kids, but they don't want to listen from us. They don't want to learn and they don't want to listen to us. You know, they're like, well, they want to learn from somebody else. So it's great that they have a coach to look up to and say, hey, this is somebody like a mentor and somebody who's walking me through something that my parents, because a lot of times it's like they're skeptical when they're going through a divorce about what their parents are saying, right? They hear, they they hear between the lines, a little bit of other things, you know, they, they hear maybe their, the interactions between their parents. So they're already making up their own minds. And for them, it's like, they need somebody outside of that to be telling them, it's okay, you've got this, here are some tools. And when your mind does go that way, use these things to get you through, right? <laughs> so. I think Sometimes they can Sometimes they can be resistant too, because they're like, I don't want more homework or things of that nature. So we always try to say, this is self-care. This is self-love. These are things you're going to need for a lifetime. So a lot of times it's like doing that activity. So it doesn't seem like it's more homework. So it's like something that's more interactive process. 
Right. And you're right. They do correlate it to homework, don't they? Anything extra that they have to do to meet somebody else. It's so true. Um, but you're yeah, right. The fun activity. But it's, I think too, I think it's important. I can imagine, you know, kids, this is so powerful because when you're going into your communities or their communities, right? Their schools, their sports, whatever. A lot of times I'll bet that they're worried about their change in their image. Like suddenly, oh, my parents are going through this. How are people going to look at me now? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, and it, and it changes the dynamic and how they have to coordinate play dates or, um, you know, what's going to happen on the sidelines of my soccer game or, you know, it's, it's challenging. And I think having a resource like, like you to go talk to rather than a school teacher or someone in more, their more traditional community circles would be really helpful. And a lot of times kids, they actually really love it. Cause it's just like, it's like their own personal time. So they makes it actually, they feel special because they actually get to talk to someone where no one else is around. It's just like their time where they get to really feel like the spotlight's on me. So it can really just help them in general feel like someone is looking at me. Someone's giving me my full attention. I'm not having to take care of other kids. I'm not having to attend to other needs in the house, but I can just, they get that one-on-one -on -one attention, which can be really helpful while they're going through that. So it takes the pressure off the parents too at times. Mm, I can imagine. And I also think that really part of, and I, I'm, I can't speak for every child, but I think part of the angst that they have going through a divorce, I'm, I come from a divorced, you know, background, my parents were divorced. Um, and I, I remember it's how do you communicate with your parents, you know, and whatever stage, and whatever age you're in, it's like, how do you communicate with them without hurting their feelings or without getting them angry, <laughs> without feeling making them feel like they're you're taking the other parent's side I mean you're you're tiptoeing you're you're going around things and it's like you know how to feel comfortable with talking to them and creating that space and that boundary so what are some of the things maybe would you what are the tools that you would use maybe to help them feel comfortable with that like practice that so they can do it <laughs> So we would help them be able to communicate to their parents, like this doesn't feel good or this does feel good to me. And we would help them process whatever they're going through, whatever the scenario might be in a home. Um, maybe they're feeling like neglected and their parent is, cause their parents, you know, maybe they're now having to work extra hours to help uh, be a single parent and, you know, in order to manage the home and whatnot. So maybe they're feeling like they don't have um, as much time with that parent because now that parent's working full time where they may have used to be a stay at home parent. So they may be feeling neglected. So we would help the child. They might come to us and say, well, I don't want to put more pressure on mommy because now she's working full time. She doesn't have time for me, but like, I don't have, I'm not having that time with her that I need. So we might help her say, you know, I, I feel like you're busy but I also miss our time together. What can we do special together on the weekend? Or what can we do is have a special night together where we can watch a movie together. So create that special moment and that new memories in their new home with that parent and help them really be able to articulate what it is they're feeling from a positive place. Because sometimes children, they don't know how to express their feelings or they might feel like they're just like scared or nervous to express their feelings because they don't want to put pressure on the parent. And so sometimes they'll act out with their behaviors. Sometimes they might regress in behavior. Um, they might, their schoolwork might go down. They might not be performing as well in school. They could, like I said, regress and wet the bed. Like sometimes children, they will show you different behaviors, have emotional outbursts. They'll show different behaviors of things that they're experiencing if they're not able to articulate their feelings. So we help them feel like they have power by articulating their feelings instead of having to emotionally act out in a way to get the attention. So we're right. coming from a positive versus a negative um, place. Very important. That's mm -hmm. great. And I think that is a big problem when, you know, when kids are facing divorce because they are genuinely, and part of it could be real, but a lot of it could be just in their heads. They're creating that angst and that drama because of the situation they're in. It's foreign to them, obviously, right. you know, so. And a lot of times there's one parent that's very focused and happens to be more physically in tune with what's going on emotionally with them. So they haven't had to have them be very overt about it. They're more 
you know, it's more subvert. So like your child walks in, you're the first line of defense, you know, hey, oh, whoa, they're coming at me with, you know, a look, a scowl or whatever. They must have had a bad day at school. But in the noise of a divorce or that transition or when it's the one parent, maybe that wasn't the most in tune, the child needs to have a verbal voice rather than um, that other voice. So I think that's important. I, I wish I had those skills as a child. <laughs> <laughs> because I did, they will serve you the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's so easy for children to be like, you know, I'm hungry, I need food, or I'm cold, I need, a, you know, clothing or a blanket or a coat. But to say like, you know, mommy, like I'm feeling, or daddy, I'm feeling like I need more time with you. That's just like something that they don't really know how to articulate. And even as adults in relationships, we really don't know how to always articulate our feelings yeah. the best way in order to benefit the relationship as a whole either. So we're just starting them young, which will benefit them for a lifetime. Absolutely. No, I like, I, guess I, I, that. I, I honestly I started that journey at a much younger age. <laughs> yeah, I think, but I think, you know, we had this, we had a talk. I, I remember last time we were talking, I, we mentioned, I mentioned to you actually during my, I was older. I was 16 when my parents got divorced. And, but I remember that it was my lacrosse coach. I mean, we didn't have this ability to go to coaches. Nobody was doing that back then or, you know, therapy for kids. Really, it wasn't in the atmosphere, right? But it was my lacrosse coach that got me through all that, that angst. And it, it, it is that. It's just having that mentor, that person who's well-versed, who knows how to deal with children at large <laughs> and kids or adolescents, whatever it is, and gets it, the psyche. And it gets it that what it is really is that Okay, you're in this situation now, but you want to go there. That's the goal setting, like you said earlier, right? Like, where do you want to be? Where do you want to visualize yourself? How do you want to operate in both households? Let's create that situation. And here's a bunch of, and some things could be trial and error, whatever works for them. Because I know that as a child, I, for example, my brother and I are very different. I definitely can just talk to everybody. My brother's more reserved. So for him, it was still hard to say certain things. Whereas I got used to it, right? So also coming from two kids in a family who are different and the characters are different. It's like, okay, it might not work for both of them the same way, right? Very true. Yes, mm -hmm. every child is very unique and every child will, you know, um, internalize the divorce or experiencing the divorce in a completely different manner. So yeah, we have to definitely understand that child's personality in terms of what works best for them and how they can adapt to new situations. Right. Um, tell me something, because this is something that, I mean, it comes up, you know, often in our community and our clients and, okay, so one parent really wants their child to go to, to coaching. You know, I see the value. I think my child needs coaching more than therapy because sometimes I feel that kids, when they go to therapy, they think something's wrong with them. Mm -hmm. And we don't want them to feel like we're, we're often we're parents were trying to preempt the situation or we generally think they do need therapy. I get it. Right. But rather than that, okay, I have, my child needs to go to the coaching. She, this will help her. This will help her cope. Right. But the other parent doesn't want that or is wholly against it. So how do you work with a family that is one parent completely rejects it and the other is so you have to assess the situation and try to understand how come the other parent is against it. Find out if it's about like financial resources. Is it about they had a bad experience personally when if they were in therapy or their parents, you know, they personally experienced something negative. So really assess the situation um, and ask questions before just like accepting no as an answer, because a lot of times um, they don't understand the whole process of what coaching is like or how it might even benefit their child in general. So, and a lot of times too, if one parent is against it, we'll suggest, hey, have the other parent call us. Let's just do, you know, a 15, 20 minute consult. Let's let us help you through that process so you're not alone in it and let us help you advocate for your child. So. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> and then. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, please. You. And so if one parent is absolutely against it, but the other parent um, definitely feels their child needs this uh, extra support in their life, if there's nothing stated in the legal documents of the parenting agreement about mental health or emotional health, then that parent has a right to go ahead and get their child um, services. So, Right, because coaching doesn't fall under the same jurisdiction as therapy, right? So it's, okay, 
So yep. you don't necessarily need the consent of the other parent or you do? You don't. If it's if it's not stated strictly in the parenting agreement anywhere, then you're perfectly fine to get your child that extra support. Okay. Great. Oh, that's great. Um, so how do, specifically, you know, I think co-parenting coaches, everyone sort of knows that tagline. Um, one of the things we call that specifically is more of the idea of family coaching. And so how would someone go about finding someone who really knows how to work with children? Because I think there's a lot of people out there that are good at having more of the adult conversations, but really those special skill sets of, of all those different milestones, like you were saying, it's, you know, at five, you're this, at eight, you're that, at 12, you're this, 15. I mean, there's such different um, kind of skill sets and cognitive abilities and social emotional issues that go along with different age groups. So how would someone go find a, a family coach, I'm gonna emphasize that, that really specializes in someone working with children? I think you want to be able to look at and look at what their background is. Like our backgrounds in marriage and family therapy psychology. So we've studied, you know, child development. We've also taught parenting classes, you know, so we understand the psychological of children. So I think making sure that expert has a background in family psychology in some way, shape or form, even though they might be practicing coaching, but they actually understand child development. I think that's really crucial in the, so that they understand also the family dynamics of what may be going on too, as to why the child's experiencing distress, right? And then you want to make sure they have something uh, specifically on their website as well that outlines that they specifically work with children, um, not that they just work with families as a whole. So we definitely have, we have a section on our website that's strictly just for children coaching. Uh, we actually got started also volunteering um, for children that were ran away from home many, many moons ago, which led us to our whole career path. Um, we used to volunteer at a crisis hotline. And so we used to mediate children and the families for uh, volunteering for three years to get them to go back home. And so she and I are very, um, we understand the child mindset as well as the adult in terms of bridging that gap and helping the family, you know, fuse together as a healthier and happier um, construct. So. Wow. What a great service that you did that. That's fantastic. So I, I applaud you for, for doing that. That's hard work. I mean, seeing a lot of that and dealing with people at those crisis moments is a big deal with particularly with runaway children. So, um, right. I mean, you're dealing with kids in anger. I mean, kids in anger, there's no, uh, you know, they can't, like you, we said earlier, I mean, they manifest it in behavioral issues and <laughs> they can't really express themselves. They're feeling frustrated and, you know, divorce brings that on, on a lot of children. Um, also, I find that, you know, you have families with two or three kids and they're all acting in a different way. Um, and that is, that even makes it harder. It's like, I'm, you know, I'm not throwing my brother under the bus because he's great. He's my best friend. We're, we're like almost twins one year apart, but you know, he definitely behaved definitely different than I did. You know, he's a boy. He acted different. He kind of put his head in the sand. I was like, Hey, I want to shake him up. I'm like, we're going through this. Like, go get on that ride with me, you know, like help me, you know? And he's like, I don't want anything to do with this right now. Like, I don't want any emotional, you know, he just really pushed it away. And, I, and it was hard for me because it was like, Oh wait, why am I doing this on my own? Like, I, but you know, there are kids who just want to deal with it in a different way. So how, how do you deal with a family environment like that? Or is it, do you just tend to deal, you know, um, work with one of the children in, in the family or do you come across that scenario? One at a time. I think it just really depends on the family itself. So typically we're working with one child at a time. I've worked with several different children in one family, but it's not all at the same time. So one might come to us and then they're doing better. And then they're like, they notice some other behaviors with a different child. And so then a new, they send another child to coaching. And so it's usually not at the same time, but usually we do work with several different family members at some point in time through okay. the dynamic as they start to see more shifts with the people who are getting the help because they start to see progress being made. And then they're like, oh, maybe, you know, our daughter who's, you know, has these extreme fears, maybe this would, she would be, benefit from this and work on her confidence. So I think it just really depends on the family itself and where, how extreme or how, you know, much that child's suffering. So it just, you know, varies degrees based on each child. 
So in your practice, just thinking about this, because you're bringing up other issues of just non-divorce, like do you, does your practice also have people not going through um, life transitions or divorces as well as people? So we help people like in terms of like blended families, we help people in who are, they have that part of that aspect in their life, but they're not going through the divorce or the, you know, it happened many, many moons ago, but there's now seeing there's change occurring in terms of like potentially co-parenting. Cause a lot of times we see that evolves over time and the parenting agreement needs to be adjusted or changed based on someone, you know, gets remarried or, and so all of a sudden the other parents, like I want more child support. So then all of a sudden we have a whole new problem that get, erupts. And so a lot of times people will come to us later on even though the divorce has already been done and over with for, you know, 10, 15 years. Right. Yeah, that's great. I, yeah, I really appreciate that about you guys. Um, well, I also want to, before we forget, I, what is the best way if people want to get in contact with you? I assume that you can work anywhere virtually. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can work anywhere virtually. Uh, they can always um, shoot us a DM on Instagram, Divorce Family Mediation, or they can head over to our website at Divorce Family Mediations with an S dot com and um, fill out our contact form to set up a consult. Divorce Family Mediations, plural? Yes, plural dot com. Yep. Okay. And then IG is also at Divorce Family Mediation. No S. Singular. Okay. I have a question for you. <laughs> I pretend like I'm in the audience, but I have an extra one that just came up. It's like when people do contact you, um, and it, it is in regards with their for their children, and they say, "Okay, I think my child needs, you know, some coaching. I think it would be really beneficial." Um, not so sure if my ex is on board yet but you know I wanted to find out how you guys work and what what are just walk me through some of the things that you might tell them like is it you know first go consult your ex or tell me why you think you know what are the questions that might then steer you into yeah I think your child could benefit from the coaching so first we're going to want to assess like what's going on with your child and the reason why you think you know your child might benefit from coaching so it's really about connecting with the parent who's initially reaching out to us and calling mm -hmm. us and just really, you know, empathizing with their situation and helping them understand this is definitely a good fit or maybe give them a referral if it's not a good fit. So we don't want to just like work with anyone because we definitely want to be make sure that everyone's going to be on board and committed to the process because right. that's where we get the best results in order to help eliminate or alleviate, you know, the emotions and feelings that are, you know, extremely overwhelming everyone in that process. So. It's just about having that initial, you know, 15, 30 minute consult to really learn about the child and the reason why you think it might be, they benefit from coaching itself. Right. right. And then we can help that parent understand what it is that we can help their child with. And then that way they better have, they are better equipped to express to the co-parent um, what it is that we'll be able to do and help their child through this process. Right. And it's kind of beneficial sometimes because I do feel that when you know that you have a contentious relationship with your ex or, you know, you're a little bit treading waters, it's, it's good to go already saying, listen, I was thinking this, I know this is how they work, you know, so it's not like, oh, I think we should do this and then and not have an explanation of how things go, right? It always helps frame the conversation a little bit better. Yes, it does. And since we work with all of our clients virtually, um, most of the time we meet with our clients on a weekly basis uh, via video chat for children. It's always video for children just because um, it's a much more interactive process when we're speaking to children versus just an individual in terms of going through the divorce process. So we need to be able to really um, connect with them uh, visually. So, so Oh. Oh, so do you, since you are working virtually, do you send them some of the tools? Like you had mentioned some stickers and some other things. Like, do you sort of ship them some things to use during your sessions? Um, no, it's just a matter of whatever, you know, art things, art, arts and crafts okay. and things I have at home. So we'll ask what they already have at home to use whatever they're working with. 
but we will send exercises for them to work on, whether it's, you know, positive affirmation exercises, journaling tools. So we'll send them like paper exercises to the parents' email to have the parent print out and do it with them if they need guidance or help. But we'll also try to do those during the session too, just so they have a better idea when they go to do it at home that they have a well understanding of what they're going to implement. Okay. And you guys have always worked virtually then, basically. Yes, we have. Even pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, yeah. Yep. You guys are very well versed in this. Of the <laughs> Old school. Oh, yeah. Amazing. I love it. I love it. Well, no, it's great because it creates a space for you to be able to also support kids everywhere in America, which I think is great, you know, and uh, I think that's also very difficult. I, I think a lot of people, um, and I have to say, I love this idea because I know one of the things that often come back is my child doesn't want to go into somebody else's room or house or it feels foreign to them. And for them to be able to be in their own environment and do something like that, I think is fantastic. It really makes them feel like they're, they can give more and they feel more confident, you know? Right. Especially now that school has kind of switched to online as well, they're much more comfortable with the whole like video session as well. So yeah, COVID has definitely helped children in terms of, you know, transitioning to operating in the virtual world as well and feeling like you said in their own home. So they're in their own environment and they feel much more comfortable to like open up as well. I think they also speaking from someone who has my, my kids are 12 and 14 they don't want to waste a lot of time cruising around to different appointments at this point in their lives. It's all about efficiency and effectiveness. <laughs> and like, oh, we don't want to go. And, and the other thing I want to um, touch upon that Lila had mentioned earlier is the, um, the difference with, with the, I don't want to call it a stigma around therapy, but a perception of children like, I'm going to therapy because something is wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And um, I've had my kids in and out of therapy for many years, including around the time that I got divorced. And I, I just, I love the idea that um, it, my children probably really could have gone to a coach during a lot of it to do exactly those skill sets of being able to communicate with their father and myself and, um, you know, express their emotions and be able to do all of that. And, and coaching is, I mean, it's just, it's so powerful that way. And uh, and at times a bit more accessible, particularly to the other discussion of having some conflict where you can be like, look, I'm, I'm going to do some coaching. Sometimes it's a little bit less expensive um, than going to a full-blown therapist program or um, person. But I just, I think more people should be looking at coaching um, as, as various milestones are hit. I mean, I love it. I think it, it's just fantastic the work that you guys are doing. And especially with children. And I know you do it with parents as well, but just the speaking on the children part, I just think it's awesome. I also think that there is a um, element to um, executive functioning, which I do realize that it's, it's like you're teaching them, right? The skills to be empowered, but also to like do things on their own. It's like, you're giving them these tools that it lacks in a lot of kids in, at large. But then when you're going through a divorce, a child like forgets about, I mean, I, like they're like, I, do I put on my shoes? Do I do this? Like, what am I doing? You know, they're going through so much in their head that they're so distracted. I know my daughter was. And so it was a difficult, it, it, it didn't mean that she needed a therapist, but she definitely did need that reminder. And then what happens is as a parent, you start coming and going, did you do that? Did you do this? And it's like, because that's what we do because we've got to get them on track. But they're like, well, we just, we, we can't, we're floating. We don't even know how to get back on track, like help us. And so part of what you're doing is really that executive functioning skill as well. Yeah, we are teaching them a lot of um, basic life skills as well that they can use to apply throughout their entire lifestyle. Um, so yeah, they are learning how to approach, you know, conflict maybe in their lives. They're learning how to communicate and express themselves. They're building their inner confidence by learning new skills. Because anytime we learn a new skill, that already automatically boosts our confidence in terms of um, who we are. They're learning to just be able to accept themselves. And there's there's no nothing better or more freeing in life than to be able to accept yourself for who you are. And I think to these skills, like she says, they can be applied across their entire lifestyle. A lot of kids now deal with bullying at school or people who just aren't 
receptive or accepting. So this is teaching them how to handle conflict in multiple different situations. So that way they do have their inner voice to speak up or be able to talk to someone or say, hey, this doesn't feel good, you know, or be able to walk away from a situation if it's, you know, really detrimental to their health, but teaching them it's okay to stand up or walk away whenever that is and learning them, helping them just understand that about themselves is very crucial. So they don't feel like they're stuck. Right. Yep. Fantastic. I mean, all really, all things that you carry on for life. And I always say that some of these things should be taught in school at a young age already. There should be a curriculum that's in the school. I don't know why they don't have that. I mean, given, I don't know. you know, the history of it and, um, yeah, and I think just divorce and separation just exasperates it already what they're going through with mean kids and this and things being said. And so yep. and I love what you guys are doing. Yeah, is a whole nother thing. And then there's the logistics piece of, you know, bringing clothes, bringing uniforms, bringing books, bringing, you know, it's, it's yeah, how to manage both homes too. You know, it's not just about communicating, but it's like, how do you manage, you know, your things between two homes if you can, you know, and how do you manage that? You know, how do you deal with one parent not wanting you to take things to the other parent's house? And, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> whoa, that goes, that brings, and that comes yeah. up a lot, you know, it does. that's going to be on our future conversation about the co parent. <laughs> side of things. Yeah, that will go down in the co-parenting. <laughs> All blame goes to the co-parenting on that one. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, but you know, but it's also the kid having to deal with all of that, you know, in the middle. So yeah, we definitely want the child to feel at ease going from one household to the other and minimizing their stress as much as possible. But yeah, when there's that tug of war, tug of war between the parents of you can't take this to their house or this and that. Yeah, that is just it's unnecessary emotional stress that children really shouldn't have to endure. So yeah, yeah. it's more of a parenting issue. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it is in one of our uh, co-parenting best practices document. We have a whole section about that. <laughs> yeah, we, there is a big section on that. Um, and it's, you know, you unfortunately go. kids can, I mean, grownups can regress and become kids. Um, <laughs> when they're going through this. And then they're coaching the kids how to manage those regressed adults. <laughs> yeah, which is great, really. They are the wave of the future. Um, so this has been very insightful and great because I think a lot of, you know, we really do get asked quite a bit about the differences and who should we go to first? I know that a lot of people just say, therapist, therapist, therapist. And because, and just like they do when they go through a divorce, they say lawyer, 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 you know, and right. you don't necessarily need the lawyer and you don't necessarily need the therapist. I'm not saying you don't need them. And I think they're very important people in, in, you know, in the right circumstances. Yeah. But yeah. Um, the coaching is such a fantastic, um, I, I don't know, a process. It helps you get process the divorce so much better in many ways, you know? So Yes, you're going to be much more equipped in order to be able to manage life and move forward when you go through coaching versus going through um, a therapist or going through, you know, or needing to get like a lawyer or things like that. A, a coach is going to be much more because they're giving you the skills and they're, but they're also not only are they helping you process the emotional weight around the situation, they're also giving you the skills of how you're moving forward and what you need to do in order to move the divorce process through. So yeah. I think it's, um, while I think there is a good place when you do need a lawyer and there's a time where you might need a therapist, coaching is definitely kind of, um, I think gives you a little bit, uh, the best of both worlds and really helping you get through that process. Yeah. Cause you're processing your emotions, but at the same time you're getting strategies in terms of your next move and what you're going to do, because nobody wants to sit here and feel, you know, icky inside or feel sad or distraught or guilt, whatever it may, you know, all those emotions that come up. But once you start taking action, your mind and your emotional state will start to follow because sometimes the, we need to move the body first. And part of that coaching process mm -hmm. is taking the body and moving it forward by taking a step in a different direction. But having someone there to guide you and hold your hand through that and give you that accountability makes it all much easier versus going through it alone. Oh, I love, I love what you just said. Cause I, I always say, I have a quote down here. That's 
you know, I am a strategic thinking partner. Like when I'm sitting down with, you know, with my clients, um, it, it is, that is exactly the mindset as a coach that, that both Lila and I employ as well. And for you to being able to do that with children is also powerful because it, it does give them in a, probably in a, a, a time of their lives, they feel like they don't have any control. Everything is out there to have some of that control and be like, Hey, you know, this week you're going to do X, Y, and Z. And, you know, I, I just, I think that's awesome. I think that's just absolutely, you, you put it perfectly. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I love the journal writing too. I think that's really important for kids to get in, in their mindset. It really does help. You know, I always say it can be just one sentence. It could be two words. It doesn't matter. Just write something that you start getting. And also too, something about that. A lot of times if kids are into writing, taking a paintbrush has the same effect with paint on a canvas because it's just the process of moving your hand, which helps you process your thinking and connecting that emotional state. So if they're not into journaling, you can try a paintbrush and some paints and see how that process goes. Mm, very good to know. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I think my daughter's way more, her modality is painting. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. And it does help and you get lost in it and it's great. And it's, you know. Yeah. Creative outlets are a great way to process emotions and feelings and releasing them and allowing you to be with yourself and be at peace. Well, thank you guys so much. Honestly, this is a great conversation. We'll probably have many more. We hope to have you guys back and we'll definitely dive into the whole co-parenting thing um, for sure. Um, and uh, I think that, you know, for our audience, it's such a, or anyone who's listening, I think the, um, that differentiator between, you know, what a coach is and a therapist is and actually making that decision then saying, oh, actually I could take this route rather than going that way. Like it's, it's grateful, for, you know, great for them to know that and make that decision. So great. thank you guys. Yes, thank, thank you so much for having us. Yep. And again, divorce family mediations with an S.com or IG singular divorce family mediation. Correct. Thank you both. Thank you ladies. Thank you.